I don't think that Gareth Bale, quote unquote, loved Real Madrid to the way maybe some of these fans do. I don't think he hated Real Madrid. I think he was maybe indifferent to Real Madrid in a lot of ways. That it was just a, it's just a part of his career. Like it's part of his job. His but job, I, his job, exactly. Yeah. But I don't hold that against him. Like I, I really think like if we're going to start bringing love into this, are we going to are we going to all of a sudden catapult Lucas Vasquez and Mariano Diaz ahead of Luis Figo, who who didn't love the club as much as those two? Luis Figo, it's funny when when he left. It seemed like no one cared. Like it's like he just left one day. He wasn't with the club anymore. I know, right? That was crazy. Yeah. And um, and 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 now, like twenty years later, we call him a Real Madrid legend, or at least a lot of us do. And, but but to like to, all of a sudden, we have double standards with Bale. I find you know, like we. I made this point on Twitter. We attack Bale's character. Meanwhile, we're chanting Juanito's name in the stadium. Juanito was a psycho. Like, forgive me. Rest in peace. <laughs> the, the guy was a stain on the club. They kicked him out. He was he was a violent psychopath, and 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 he tragically died young in a car accident. And he's been immortalized in the chant. And I'm fine with that. But like, I think most of the people who chant his name, they don't even know why they're chanting it. Other than the fact that he died. And now all of a sudden, he's a club legend for those reasons. Juanito, from a pure footballing level, is nowhere near Bale's level. And I think if you zoom out and you look at the wingers in Real Madrid history, there is maybe a handful at their peak were better than Bale. I think maybe you could say that they had ultimately a better career than than Bale. Like I think somebody like Gento is obviously above Bale. I think somebody like Michel... If you're talking about longevity and career and his legacy is probably ahead of Bale, but his peak certainly wasn't ahead of Bale. Figo's longevity is not ahead of Bale, but his peak was ahead of Bale. I think it's just interesting conversation to look at it this way. But to me, the fact that you have to bring character into this is a very strange thing. Because first of all, nobody has smooth sailing from from start to finish in their Real Madrid career, including legends. Um, And... And I, look, the last two years of Bale were brutal. My column this week on Bale was quite scathing. I think if you reread it, it was quite, it was not very flattering to him. At the same time, I highlighted all of the things he achieved. So I, I'm not, I'm not saying I necessarily disagree with people who don't think he's a legend. But, but I am, I am saying like, it's very weird the things that we stu- suddenly started to cling to. So let me, let me, let me just um, bring another example into this, the, the way people are thinking about this, okay? So, at first, it's like, Bale is, Bale is not good. And then you, you show them the numbers, and he's like, okay, his stats are insane. He scored over 100 goals for the club. His numbers across many metrics are better than any Galacticos other than Raul's. And then it's like, okay, well, but, that, but don't, be, don't be a nerd. We have the eye test, you know. He's he wasn't that good, and then you like kind of like go through like no, actually like he's he was insanely good all things considered, and he won a bunch of trophies and and had the balls to have big games in, in big moments in big games, and then it's like oh but um you know his character was this, and it's like okay well here are a list of legends that were not saints. It's like yeah, but he didn't love the club. Well okay well here's a, here's a legend that didn't love the club. Like yeah but. Uh, Wales Golf Madrid apathy blah 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 like it's like it's like they double down on this narrative because somebody is apparently holding this gun to their head like you must you must drag this person as much as we can why do we have to do this to ourselves why do we have to drag people all the time like just yeah. call for what it is great player became apathetic terrible last two years he is not blameless he is at fault but we don't got to continue to double down on this idea that he was like this person we can't appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder where and why it all went wrong, where it all went south and why it all went south for Gareth Bale. Mm-hmm. Do you – well, what do you – where I, do you I think, think I'm, I'm actually just asking. To me, I think it I was – when Zizou, Zizou mm-hmm. came in, I think – well, I, I mean, it, it's it's more of a question to you. I'd like to know your, you know, where where you think it all just started to go sour for the man. In my column, I pinpointed it back to 2017 in a Clasico, where he, you know, he already had this reputation of never being healthy, and it was so frustrating because right. as soon as he got yes. healthy, we were like, finally, 
and then it just the yeah. cycle would repeat itself. And good point. And and but, but 2017 Classico to me was the boiling point because he missed a month of football and they 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 rushed him back and everything was okay. He started the Classico and then 28 minutes into the Classico he limps off the field and he's injured and Zidane has to burn a sub. And I think so but to answer your question I don't think there was one primal point where it's like this is when it happened. I think it's just like it's kind of like a marriage like you know in a divorce I don't know unless it's like something a very very traumatic event like you know one of the one of the parties cheats on each other then it's like okay well it was that point. But if it, mm. otherwise if you look at a divorce it's like so where did it start it's like oh I don't know but now we're basically arguing about you didn't do the dishes you didn't um take the garbage out how dare you dare you not you know put your shoes in the closet like okay what are we arguing about again you don't know what where the right. point was it's just like over the course of years things just get stacked against each other and it's like okay well we need to split i think it was kind of like that but at the same time i think it was just years of frustration like so when you ask like was it when zidane came in we have to remember also when zidane was a sporting director for the club he also said um gareth bale was born to play for Real Madrid. He was one of the activists to, to sign Bale when he was a sporting director with the club. And when he first came in as a coach, he, he also said publicly, the BBC are undroppable. Like when they're fit, they all play. That's it. It wasn't yeah, until yeah. 2017 when his that. injuries hit a point where he just wasn't available and Isco was playing at such a high level. And that's finally when he became undroppable and things started to change, I think, around that time. So... It actually, you know, I forgot to bring Isco into the mix in my column, but around the same time that Bale was continually injured, Isco was also carrying the mantle in his position in a different role. But so that could have been a part of it too. Um, um